Hello friends, welcome to e Shala. I am Dr. Shweta Dhaliwal, Department of Political Science, Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law, Punjab, which is situated at Patel. In this very module, we juxtapose and compare and contrast two very fascinating theories to understand political science or political concepts, and these are normative and behavioral approach. The normative approach is understood to be based on philosophy, based on prescriptions and um, utopian ideas. As a contrast to this, the behavioral approach is considered to be very concrete, based on facts, empirically designed and having scientific conclusions. In this module, the major objective would be to understand these two theories and in addition to that, we also would be attempting the comparison of uh, between these two theories. Now, while we do the comparison, uh, another objective is to highlight how, uh, despite being very distinct and different, these theories do have a linkage uh, between them. The normative approach or the idealistic approach to political science is a traditional approach having its root in Greek philosophies. The word normative comes into the arena from Latin word meaning rule or normal. Hence, normative approach is one that expresses particular preference based on universal values. It encompasses epistemological, ontological and metaphysical study of political philosophy. Normative approach is subjective in nature whereas empirical approach is objective in nature. For example, the concept of equality has different understanding for different people. For Plato, equality meant voting rights to citizens only excluding women and slaves. But for feminists, equality means equal rights for all sexes. This understanding expresses the different sets of values or moral principles people have. These judgments or values fail the objectivity test and cannot be verified or observed. Hence, normative approach lacks scientific validity. It has nothing to do with the existing system almost and instead it prescribes uh, and determines uh, values and proposes a new ideal system. Hence, it is study of what ought to be the model of state or governance or how it should be done. The ancient philosophers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle were concerned with virtue and theories had normative perspective of course. The theories were based on ethical considerations. The philosophical bent included questions related to the nature of man, what is virtue, what should be the ideal nature of state or political community, whether man is good or not, etc. There was also no difference between political and social life. Socrates emphasizes on virtue to Plato's utopian notion of an ideal state have theorized the normative approach. So we see the idea which grew from Socrates continued to remain so that is the focus on virtue even in his student that is Plato's utopian notion of an ideal state. The turmoil in Greek society made these philosophers to think and speculate an ideal order of state. Plato devised the philosopher king in his work The Republic where he prescribed for a learned group of philosophers ruling without testing or using any scientific methodology. Plato's state was not existing, it was in philosopher's imagination only. Many thinkers of medieval era like Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote their works which were primarily based on their imagination and expectation. Their imagination were colored with their experiences of the existing situations although, hence their work were flight from the reality. The Leviathan of Hobbes portrayed the man in state of nature as selfish, brutish, solitary, quarrelsome, etc. Hence, a strong leader was required to control such nature of man. People made a social contract, he says, and surrendered rather all their rights except right to life to an outsider who came to rule them. Hobbes speculated that uh, the monarchy was the best form of government. However, John Locke and Rousseau presented a little breakaway from what is being said by Hobbes in his theory. Works of Machiavelli or Frederick Engel were too based on normative understanding. The Prince of Machiavelli was essentially suggesting the right course of actions based on the conditions of standards that were required at that time. The Gis of Hegel was an idea that could only be understood through faculty of mind. The preeminence of values like good, virtue, right or wrong dominates the normative theories. 
The philosophical approach to politics, also known as idealistic approach, extends from Plato to Karl Marx and even later. Earlier, the focus of normative approach was on state and government. There was an underlying universal moral or ethical value system in the theories. What we discuss ahead are some of the important features of normative approach. The normative theories are based on norms or values. The existence of situation never mattered to the philosophers. They were keen on prescribing a standard model of political institutions. A particular form of conduct was imagined that could substitute the existing conduct or situation without addressing the core issues or describing the problems present. Hence, the theories deviated from reality. What should be the reality mattered instead of what is the reality. For example, the ideal state of Plato was his utopia and it concentrated on what should be the ideal order of state. Secondly, the preeminence of values like good, virtue, beauty, bad or unjust etc. colored the normative thinking. The major concern was to set an ideal model or standard based on ethics and morality of the society. How the society of political organizations should function or how a man should behave. Some ideas were prescribed by various theorists and these uh, prescriptions were heavily loaded with values. The normative approach is uh, also based on speculations or assumptions. The approach presents an alternative to the existing reality. Uh, better options are given by the theorists like uh, Plato by virtue of his uh, philosopher king which was a substitution to the existing democratic rule in Greece or the prince of Macaulay was the ideal course of action as prince should take to govern his uh, subjects. These philosophers believe that their theories will work successfully without doing any scientific experiments. The deduction of Plato or the theory of state by Hobbes was based on philosophical understandings. The normative approach studies the institutions like state, government or the origin of state. It makes a political inquiry to suggest the better options. The historical materialism of Karl Marx related the history with the existing legal and political institutions. The biggest criticism of the normative approach is that it is subjective in nature. The student is dependent on the likes and dislikes of the philosophers and his inclinations toward a particular value system. For example, Aristotle justifies slavery in his own work saying that it is based on natural order but uh, this uh, speculation might appear absolutely absurd to a mind of this day. The communism of Plato reduced the identity of a woman to a machine for producing children thereby demolishing the family structure and the identity of women. This understanding reflects his subjectivity and understanding. Another example is of Plato for democratic government. The reason for his dislike was the failure of the government in maintaining law and order and also the same government punished Socrates. The other drawback of normative approach is that it is prescriptive in nature and does not describe the existing system to the fullest. The best alternatives are provided without addressing the concrete problems of the present. Almost no consideration is given to reform or change the present situation. Thus, normative approach is a flight from reality. The assumptions in the normative approach lack scientific validity. It vindicates the prejudices or biases prevalent in the society. For example, the differences in intellectual capacity was taken as a ground to justify women inferior in position uh, or in the given society by Plato and Aristotle and many others. This reflect their biases and lack empirical evidences of course. Normative approach based on a value system present in that particular time and uh, does not attempt to pass any scientific test or analysis. There is an absence of reasonable criteria which bifurcates the good and bad or moral and immoral yet all the theories pertaining to normative in approach try to standardize the institutions on ethical and moral grounds. There are different parameters for moral values and the normative approach tries to create a moral base for political institutions to stand hence different standards and perceptions for the same institutions which are provided while making it ambiguous to choose the proper and clear version. Since the theories are based on imagination and speculation, it is difficult to say that uh, they would be effective in if implemented. For example, if Plato's theory of communism is implemented, will it succeed is a big question. Another problem of feasibility comes up in implementation of these uh, theories. For example, will it be possible to unite workers of the world as imagined by Karl Marx? Normative approach is pure theoretical approach or the theories never discuss the dynamics of politics or the existing political entities uh, because that's not the focus. Instead, the focus remains at changing the entities entirely. There is a difference in the ideal world designed under normative perspective and the real world. 
normative approach or the philosophical approach is dependent on time and situation for example when aristotle was justifying slavery it was relevant in that time and space but uh, it does not hold any relevancy now ancient normative approach focuses on state politics power and did not give much of an importance to individual aspect of state system hence for ancient normative approach state was an end in itself and men were means to that end normative approach though suffers from lack of scientific testing yet it is relevant which is a very pertinent point to be mentioned in this module for example a state should give equal opportunities to all citizens irrespective of gender for better functioning of the state and government this kind of statement despite being normative in assumption can be testified and verified through data like working women or any kind of women across the world who are bringing and working towards bringing prosperity to their homes so on and so forth the normative approach focuses on innate core principles and values which target at the welfare of uh, many normative approach also have certain universal acceptance of concept like uh, freedom equality and these are prerequisites for any political institution normative approach tries to frame politics as a moral instrument and principles like legitimacy is desired for any form of government normative approach does not negate empiricism and objectivity but it uh, encompasses various social sciences for a better understanding of society individuals and political communities Moving on to the second part of the module and that is behavioral approach in modern times behavioralism has played an important role in political science and also happens to be one of the most significant modern approaches to the study of political science behavioralism is an um, approach which uh, attempts to provide an objective quantified approach in explaining and uh, predicting a political behavior it is mainly concerned with examining the behavior actions and acts of the individuals rather than characteristics of the institutions it underscores the uh, systematic inquiry of all inclusive expression of political behavior it also asserts the application of meticulous scientific and statistical methods in order to standardize means of investigation the behavioralist insists that the main role of the political scientist is to collect and analyze factual data in an objective manner Kirkpatrick mentions the following four characteristics of behavioralism. Number 1, it is a study of the individual behavior. In behavioralism, the behavior of the individual instead of the political institutions is analyzed. This is the main characteristic of this approach. Secondly, uh, it is interdisciplinary in nature. Behavioralism can be studied only in relation with other disciplines. In the absence of the knowledge of other social sciences, politics cannot be, rather should not be studied. therefore it lays emphasis on interdisciplinary method thirdly for analysis it lays emphasis on the scientific method behavioralism emphasizes the collection of uh, depend on statistics and their evaluation with the scientific method the behavioralists uh, want to establish systematized pragmatic theory according to jeffrey k roberts in a dictionary of political analysis Political behavior as an area of uh, study with political science is concerned with those aspects of human behavior that take place within a state or other political community for political purposes or with political motivation. Its focus is the individual person as voter, leader, revolutionary, party member, opinion leader, etc., rather than the group or the political system. But it necessarily takes account of the influences of the group on the individual's behavior. The constraints of the system on the individual's opportunity for the action and the effects of the political culture on his attitude and political habits. Behavioralism rose mainly because of several reasons to highlight a few the first reason it came up as a reaction against the traditional approaches or the normative approach which we just discussed and the second reason as a more scientific method of acquiring and empirically analyzing Behavioralism or behavioral approach is particularly associated with the works of American political scientists after the Second World War. The origin of behavioral study in political science is often accredited to Graham Wallace and Arthur Bentley. Their respective writings have been Human Nature in Politics and The Process of Government. Wallace pointed out that the human nature is complex and he proposed gathering and analyzing the factual data on human behavior. On the other hand, Bentley is credited with inventing the group approach in political science. He emphasized on the role of informal groups such as pressure groups, etc., and the political opinions of people. Wallace drew inspiration from psychology and Bentley from sociology. 
Another significant contribution was made by the Chicago school founder Charles E. Merriam. He objected to the traditional approach since they suffered with the absence of thorough scientific inquiry. He also criticized the work of social scientists who did not take in consideration the role of psychology, sociology, and economics in human life. He advocated interdisciplinary approach and the use of quantitative techniques in the study of politics. Kathleen, in his work Science and Method of Politics, spoke of marking politics as a value-free social science. For him, the essence of politics lies in power and for analyzing power, no particular value system should be taken into account. Post Second World War, American political scientists made significant strides in the field of political science with regard to behavioralism. Political scientists like Robert Dahl, Kirkpatrick, David Truman made contributions to the behavioralism approach and elaborated and expanded the scope beyond the scope of political science. It's significant to mention David Easton's role because he set forth the eight intellectual foundations of behavioral approach. So the conclusion of the module which we just did on normative and behavioral approach it's, it's a combination of the two approaches that is the normative and the behavioral approach which results in a learned student of political science because the normative approach while gives you a spectacular range of ideas which are necessarily idealistic ideas and in this backdrop of the philosophical approach of the normative theory we try to take direction and take motivation while designing concrete policies for the society. It will be an exaggeration to say that these two approaches are nothing to uh, exchange e with each other or it, it would also be wrong to say that these the, the relevance of normative approach is no more, it's obsolete. Therefore, um, try to understand this module and learn more, read more to understand how the relevance of these two theories is intact. Thank you.